Hi, this is Al Williams. You may have seen our GP3 board, which is a small board that connects to RS-232 or USB and provides you with eight digital channels, five analog channels, hardware pulse width modulation, and a hardware counter input. Those things are accessible to programming languages like C++, C Sharp. Uh, you can run it under Linux in a variety of languages like C++, C++ Gambus. Uh, you can get to it from Java, of course. You can get to it from active server pages and VBA applications, and there's examples of all that on our website, www.awce.com. But there's a very interesting interface that we've provided for a couple of years now for Windows called GP3EZ that lets you do a lot of control applications without any programming whatsoever. So I wanted to give you a little informal demo of this. This is actually running under Linux. It turns out GP3EZ can run using Mono under Linux, and we've just released a new version, version 1.6, that specifically knows about Linux and does a few things to make it cosmetically nicer, even though the older versions would run under Linux with a little coaxing. So the main screen here, fairly straightforward. You've got your typical menu bar. You've got a place to load files. Uh, you've got a serial port. In this case, since this is Linux, it knows the default is dev ttys0, although I certainly have a lot more choices on this machine. <clears throat> and there's just one empty step here that it put automatically. I'm going to load one of the example scripts. In particular, this script will blink the onboard LED. And so you can see the file name here. Uh, we can see this is a simple script that's just a comment. This came from a Windows PC, so it's got COM5 built into it. I'm going to change that. If I were to save it, it would stay saved, so I wouldn't have to do that again. And you can see the script has two steps in it. It's got a start step that waits a half second and turns the LED on. And then it's got a second step that waits a half second, turns the LED off. And that little mark there tells me that it jumps somewhere. And, of course, you can guess, since there's only one other statement, it must jump back to that statement. So let's look at that in the step editor, which is this screen right here. You can see the first step is enabled. It's tagged with a start. There's a comment, just like we saw on the first page. And there's these tabs here. A condition tells me when this step's going to execute. And in this particular case, it says wait 500 milliseconds. But I can also do things like tell it to always execute, execute on some input pattern, when my counter exceeds a certain value, when an analog channel reaches some condition, you can set things like less than, greater than, that sort of thing. Uh, I can wait till after some time. I can repeat that, like I can say, you know, at this particular time and repeat every hour. And there's also a variety of external conditions, so I can execute a program and see what the program says, for example. So when the conditions match, in this particular case, the 500 milliseconds, I'm going to take some action. And that action is turn the LED on, although, as you can see, I could do lots of other things like generate an output or a pulse, set the hardware pulse width modulation channel, output a frequency. Uh, there's a couple of loops that you can use to do looping, and you can also enable or disable other steps, and you can execute external programs. So in this particular case, just turn the LED on is sufficient. And the next step is going to tell me to wait for this to get finished and go to the next step. Now I could also go to a particular step. I could leave a bookmark. That makes it like a subroutine call instead of a jump. Uh, this again has to do with the looping. And I can go to the last bookmark, which would be like a subroutine return. So that's the basic two steps there. And when I hit run, now, if you could see the board right now, the LED is flashing just like you would expect. Now, this is a pretty simple script, but if it were more complicated, I might want to run it under the debugger, where I can actually step through it one step at a time. Uh, I can execute with a breakpoint. You know, you can see it kind of executes slowly, and I could break or I can repause it. And it shows me the step I'm on. It shows me values for things like if I were reading the A to D channel, what it actually read there. And it would also show me the state, which is something we haven't seen yet. And I'll show you that in a minute. So that's it. It's pretty straightforward. You know, it's interesting, though, some of the things that you might consider doing is, for example, I could say 
if I had a temperature sensor, I could say, well, when that temperature sensor exceeds a certain level, execute this step, and that step would be to output some bits that would turn a fan on, for example. And then that might uh, jump to another step that would wait for the temperature sensor to reach another level and then turn it back off. And that would be really, really simple to do with just a couple of steps, a couple of mouse clicks here. So it's pretty powerful, even though it's also pretty simple. I mentioned about the states. That's turned off by default, but if I hit Show States here, then you'll see on the Step Editor, I get an extra tab. And that tab is called States, not surprisingly. Right now, I'm not using any states because... I don't have any defined and so every step applies to all states and every step just stays in state one but I can change that if I come in here and define some states like I might have idle and I might have running okay now I have two states and that'll be for every step and I can tell it okay you know this step only applies when I'm in the idle state right and when it completes, I want to set a different state. I want to set state 2. So I'm going to go from idle to running, for example. So you don't have to use this. You can also get the same effect by just duplicating steps and jumping amongst them. But this makes the, that sort of programming a lot easier to be able to have these states. And if you don't like them, you don't have to turn them on. And it all works the way it always has. The other thing that's on here is you can start a TCP server uh, on a particular port and that's used to as an experimental feature to let you build user interfaces that interact with this so if you wanted to have uh, a gauge that showed you an analog value for example or a graph and buttons that would turn on IO you could do that you can interact with the GP3EZ running on here probably one of the most interesting features though is you can actually compile so you can hit the compile button and say download to GP3 and it will in fact send it down to the board and now when the board is reset and the jumper for program versus run is set right it will actually run these steps without having a PC connected at all and that's really powerful you can get the script working the way you want read the temperature sensor turn on the fan turn off the fan say yep I think that works pretty good compile it down to the GP3 and now that board just has that function it doesn't have to be hooked up to a PC to do that you may have already noticed though on the step editor there are a few things you can't do in a compiled script right the items in blue are not compilable so things like the actual time of day that it needs to you know the PC needs to be doing that or external programs or for example here this box if you were picking an analog channel averages a certain number of samples and that only happens on the PC as well so, you know, same thing, disabling and enabling steps only works if you're running on the PC, executing an external program. So there's a few things you can't do, but in general, um, you know, if you're, most of the things that you would want to run without the PC will run by compiling down to the board. So all in all, it's very powerful, very low-cost way to do some real physical analog and digital I.O., uh, without writing a lot of software or, or having to know a whole lot about what you want to, uh, how you want to accomplish those things, just basically fill out these forms, make up some scripting steps, test them, and if you don't want to run on the PC, compile it down to the board, and you're you're ready to go. So uh, there's more videos. There's a video of a robot that runs using GP3EZ, and also I think just some general demo videos. Uh, in particular, check out www.awce.com slash gp3ez and you'll find a lot more including the help files uh, and demos and examples and so forth so thanks for watching